Have you ever felt belittled, undervalued, or misunderstood by others? Have their words felt like a weight dragging your spirit down? This shared human experience beckons a question of ancient wisdom, one that Stoic philosophers like Epictetus have pondered deeply. How can we live in such a way that the opinions and actions of others do not harm us? Stoicism, a philosophy as relevant today as it was in ancient Greece and Rome, offers a beacon of hope and resilience in navigating the rough waters of social interactions. The essence of Stoicism lies in the recognition that while we cannot control the actions or thoughts of others, we have absolute dominion over our reactions and perceptions. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher and Roman emperor, famously stated, you have power over your mind, not outside events, realize this, and you will find strength. But how can we apply this timeless wisdom to ensure that we are never disrespected? The journey to answering this question unfolds through 10 Stoic lessons, each a step towards cultivating a life of dignity, self-respect, and inner peace. These lessons are not mere strategies but pathways to transforming how we perceive and interact with the world around us. They guide us to look inward, focusing on our virtues, setting healthy boundaries, and leading by example. As we embark on this exploration, let us ask ourselves, what aspects of our lives can we reclaim control over? How can we fortify our spirits against the arrows of disrespect? The answers lie within the teachings of Stoicism, offering not just a shield against disrespect, but a roadmap to a peaceful, happy, and meaningful life. And we have a small challenge for you before we start, that is, don't miss any moment of today's meaningful journey. Not only does this help us continue to create valuable content, but it also marks the start of your journey to personal growth. Comment ready if you are ready to step into the journey today. Lesson number one, respond, don't react. In the bustling amphitheater of life where voices of discord often rise above the harmony, the stoic philosophy shines a beacon of tranquility. Respond, don't react is not merely advice. It is a principle that, when practiced, elevates the human spirit above the mire of disrespect and discord. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher and Roman emperor, eloquently said, you have power over your mind, not outside events, realize this, and you will find strength. This wisdom underscores the essence of our first lesson. Imagine yourself in the heat of a disagreement, words sharp as arrows are aimed at your character. The impulse to retaliate is a natural human reaction, yet it is in this crucible that the Stoic philosophy invites you to forge a different path. Ask yourself, what power do these words truly hold over me, and how can I respond with reason, not with the heat of my emotions? Reflecting on these questions in moments of potential conflict can transform the energy of disrespect into an opportunity for growth. Real-life examples abound where individuals faced with public criticism or personal attacks chose to respond with dignity and composure. Consider Nelson Mandela, who, after years of imprisonment, emerged not with bitterness but with a message of reconciliation and understanding. His response to years of disrespect was not reactive anger but a measured, deliberate choice to seek peace and unity. What would it look like if you applied this lesson to your daily interactions? Imagine the freedom of releasing the need to control others' perceptions, focusing instead on cultivating your inner peace and wisdom. Let this stoic lesson be a call to action to live with intentionality, to choose your responses with wisdom, and to navigate the seas of life with the steady hand of reason. In doing so, you will not only disarm disrespect but also embark on a journey toward a peaceful, happy, and successful life. As Epicurus, another towering figure in Stoicism, once said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Lesson number two, set healthy boundaries. In the pursuit of a life where no one will disrespect you, the art of setting healthy boundaries emerges as a cornerstone. It's a manifestation of the wisdom imparted by the Stoic philosopher Seneca, who advised, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. This profound insight prompts us to consider, are we letting the fear of others' reactions deter us from setting necessary limits? Setting boundaries is an affirmation of your value. It sends a clear message, this is where I stand, this is what I accept. Take, for example, Rosa Parks. Her refusal to give up her seat was not just an act of defiance against racial segregation. It was a boundary set against disrespect and injustice, echoing through history as a testament to the power of personal dignity. 
But setting boundaries goes beyond grand historical moments. It's in the daily decisions, the ability to say no to additional work when you're already stretched thin, the courage to ask for help when you're overwhelmed, and the wisdom to prioritize your well-being over pleasing others. These actions build a fortress around your peace of mind, allowing you to live not at the mercy of others' demands, but in alignment with your own values and needs. In embracing this lesson, we not only safeguard our dignity but also invite others to understand and respect our values. It's a step toward a life marked by tranquility, happiness, and success, affirming that true respect starts within. So let us draw our lines thoughtfully, echoing Aurelius's wisdom, and navigate life's tumult with stoic grace. As you navigate the complexities of life, ask yourself, what boundaries will you set today to safeguard your peace and dignity? Please share your stories and insights in the comments. Lesson number three, maintain modesty in your endeavors. Maintaining modesty in our endeavors is a powerful stoic virtue that quietly commands respect. The philosopher Seneca once said, true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. This wisdom speaks to the heart of modesty, finding contentment in the present moment in our current achievements without the need for external validation. Consider the story of Aung San Suu Kyi, the Burmese leader who, despite her Nobel Peace Prize and global recognition, remained humble in her fight for democracy. Her modesty in the face of accolades allowed her message to resonate more deeply, earning her respect not for the honors, but for her unwavering commitment to her cause. But how does this lesson apply to your life? Have you ever found yourself seeking validation through achievements or the approval of others? Reflect on moments when modesty might have steered interactions toward genuine respect rather than superficial admiration. By embracing modesty, we also encourage others to see the value of our character and actions, not just our titles or accomplishments. This does not mean diminishing our successes but rather allowing them to speak for themselves without our interference. As you move forward, consider how you can incorporate modesty into your daily life. It might be as simple as listening more than you speak or acknowledging the contributions of others to your successes. Remember, in the practice of modesty, we find a serene path to a peaceful, happy, and successful life, one where respect is given freely, not because we demand it, but because we've shown ourselves worthy through our actions and character. Let this stoic principle guide you and watch as the world responds to your quiet confidence with the respect you seek. Lesson number four, seek wisdom in every situation. Within the tapestry of life's varied experiences, seeking wisdom in every situation offers a pathway to transforming moments of disrespect into profound lessons of growth and resilience. Marcus Aurelius, a sage of stoicism, once advised, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injury. This guidance encapsulates the essence of our fourth lesson, viewing every instance of disrespect not as a personal affront, but as an opportunity to deepen our understanding and fortitude in Stoic philosophy. But how does one extract wisdom from the sting of disrespect? Imagine facing criticism at work, instead of harboring resentment. You pause and reflect, what can this situation teach me about patience, understanding, or perhaps areas for personal improvement? Such reflection is not a sign of acquiescence but an active choice to seek growth over grievance. Historical figures exemplify this principle with clarity. Consider the story of Nelson Mandela, who, after 27 years in prison, emerged not with bitterness, but with a vision of reconciliation and understanding for his nation. Mandela's response to decades of disrespect was not retaliation but the application of wisdom to heal and unite. As you navigate through life's challenges, ask yourself, how can this moment enrich my understanding? What lesson does it hold? Remember, each situation, no matter how trivial or profound, holds the potential for wisdom. Let this stoic lesson inspire you to embrace every experience as a teacher. By doing so, you fortify your resilience, cultivate peace, and pave your way towards a life marked by happiness and success. Embrace this journey with the assurance that no act of disrespect can diminish your quest for wisdom, for it is within this pursuit that your true strength lies. Lesson number five, cultivate self-worth from within. How often do we seek validation from the world outside, only to find that true peace comes from within? This question lies at the heart of cultivating self-worth from within, a cornerstone of Stoic wisdom. The philosopher Seneca, a pillar of Stoicism, once said, it is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more, that is poor. This insight invites us to reconsider where true value and respect originate. 
Consider the example of Eleanor Roosevelt, the United States First Lady, who famously stated, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Her life was a testament to the power of internal validation. Despite facing intense public scrutiny and personal challenges, she maintained a strong sense of self-worth and dignity by adhering to her values and convictions. But how can we start this journey towards self-validation? It begins with introspection. Ask yourself, what qualities do you admire in yourself? Are you kind, resilient, and creative? Recognizing these traits and valuing them for their intrinsic worth, irrespective of external affirmation, is the first step. Another practical step is to set personal achievements that are aligned with your values, rather than societal expectations. Achieving these goals will reinforce your sense of self-worth based on your own standards. As you reflect on your path to cultivating self-worth from within, remember that the journey is uniquely yours. The question then becomes, are you ready to embrace your intrinsic value? Free from the chains of external validation, let this stoic lesson guide you towards a life where your peace, happiness, and success are derived from an unshakable sense of self-worth, fostering a life where no one can ever make you feel disrespected. Comment on, cultivate self-worth, if you have learned a lesson for yourself. Lesson number six, practice empathy and understanding. In navigating the stormy waters of interpersonal dynamics, practicing empathy and understanding emerges as a beacon of light guiding us toward a harbor of mutual respect, stoic wisdom, especially from Marcus Aurelius who reminded us, whenever you feel pain, remember that it's nothing to be ashamed of and that it can't degrade your guiding intelligence, nor keep it from acting rationally and for the common good, illuminates the path to comprehending the profound impact of empathy. This insight encourages us to view acts of disrespect not as personal affronts, but as expressions of another's inner turmoil or ignorance. Consider the moment someone lashes out at you in frustration, instead of reacting defensively. What if you paused and considered the unseen battles they might be fighting? This shift in perspective is not just theoretical. Take the story of Daryl Davis, an African-American musician who, instead of meeting clansmen with understandable anger or disdain, approached them with curiosity and compassion. His willingness to engage and empathize led to over 200 members renouncing their clan membership. His actions embody the stoic ideal of transforming conflict through understanding and patience. How then can you apply this lesson to your daily life? Are there conflicts or tensions that might benefit from a more empathetic approach? Imagine the peace and happiness that could stem from such understanding, both for yourself and others. As you reflect on this, remember that empathy and understanding are strengths, not weaknesses. They have the power to disarm conflict, heal wounds, and foster a world where disrespect is dissolved in the face of compassion. Let us, then, inspired by stoic wisdom, Strive to approach every interaction with empathy and understanding, laying the foundation for a life marked by peace, happiness, and success. Lesson number seven, exercise discretion in your associations. Navigating through life's tumultuous waters, the company we keep serves as both our anchor and our sail. Seneca, a stoic luminary, once advised, associate with those who will make a better man of you. This counsel lies at the heart of our seventh lesson, the careful selection of our associations. The people we surround ourselves with can uplift us, shaping an environment where mutual respect flourishes, or they can pull us into the depths of discord and disrespect. Consider the historical figure of Socrates, who, despite facing criticism and eventual condemnation, chose to engage with individuals who valued wisdom and integrity. His choice of association left a legacy that still resonates today, demonstrating the enduring power of virtuous companionship. In contemporary society, we witness the importance of selective associations among successful individuals who attribute their achievements to surrounding themselves with positive, inspiring people. This strategic choice is not about exclusivity but about aligning oneself with those who reflect the values we aspire to embody. As you traverse the journey of life, ask yourself, do the people around me reflect the virtues I cherish? Do they encourage me to live according to my principles, fostering an atmosphere where respect is both given and received? Let this reflection guide you towards associations that enrich your character and fortify your resolve to lead a life of respect, peace, and happiness. How will you curate your circle to mirror the virtues you hold dear? Your insights could be a guiding light for someone. Please share in the comments. Lesson number eight, focus on your virtues. 
Virtue is the only good, a profound declaration by Seneca that strikes at the heart of Stoicism and our focused exploration of virtue, in a realm where societal acclaim and external validation often overshadow intrinsic worth. Stoicism emerges as a beacon guiding us to anchor our self-esteem not on fleeting accolades but on the solid bedrock of personal virtue. Reflecting on Stoic virtue, let us draw inspiration from the Stoic exemplar, Cato the Younger. His life narrative is a testament to the indomitable strength of virtue amidst political upheaval and moral decay. Cato's adherence to Stoic virtues like wisdom, courage, justice, and self-control remained unyielding. He stood as a moral compass earning not just respect but reverence, not for his status, but for his staunch commitment to principle. Cato's legacy endures, illustrating that respect grounded in virtue is not only more meaningful but also everlasting. Turning our gaze to the contemporary world, we witness the embodiment of Stoic virtue in figures such as Malala Yousafzai. With bravery and a steadfast pursuit of justice, she champions the cause of education for girls worldwide. Malala's journey underscores that true respect is a reflection of one's virtues, rather than one's achievements or position. Her story, like Cato's, inspires us to pursue a path defined by virtue. This lesson, focusing on our virtues, challenges us to introspect, are we in pursuit of external validation, or are we cultivating our inner garden of virtues? Stoicism teaches us that the latter path leads to a fortress of self-respect that stands impervious to external judgments and disrespect. In embracing this Stoic wisdom, we find ourselves less perturbed by the opinions of others, and our sense of self-worth is fortified by the virtues we nurture within. As we journey forward, let's contemplate, which virtues will I cultivate today to for- Lesson number 9 accept what you cannot change. Navigating the ebb and flow of life with grace and resilience necessitates a profound understanding of what is within our control and what lies beyond it. The ninth lesson, accept what you cannot change, embodies this principle, teaching us to release the pursuit of external validation and respect, recognizing instead the inherent freedom in focusing on our own actions and virtues. Stoic philosopher Epictetus eloquently captures this sentiment, stating, some things are within our power, while others are not. Within this realization lies the key to enduring peace and happiness. The life of Nelson Mandela is a vivid illustration of this philosophy in action. Imprisoned for 27 years, Mandela faced unimaginable disrespect and adversity. Yet, he chose not to dwell on the unchangeable malice of his captors. Instead, he focused on his unyielding vision for a reconciled South Africa. Demonstrating that true power lies in our response to life's injustices, Mandela's legacy is a testament to the strength found in acceptance and the profound impact it can have on the world. In our daily lives, this lesson prompts a reflective examination of where we seek control, particularly in our desire for respect and acknowledgement from others. How often have we allowed the disregard of someone to unsettle our inner peace? Imagine instead the tranquility that could ensue from shifting our focus inward to the aspects of our lives we can influence and improve. By embracing the wisdom of accepting what we cannot change, we unlock a path to serenity and self-empowerment. This stoic principle does not advocate for passivity but for a strategic focus on our own actions, attitudes, and growth. Let this lesson encourage us to ask ourselves, in what areas of my life can I practice acceptance today? And how might this acceptance transform my experience? Engaging with this question is not merely an academic exercise but a step toward a more peaceful, fulfilling life unburdened by the need for external validation. Lesson number 10, Lead by Example. Lead by example is a guiding principle that not only elevates the individual but also enriches the community at large. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, embodied this philosophy, stating, waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be, be one. This lesson encapsulates the essence of Stoicism, the belief that the most effective way to teach is through our actions and behavior, not merely through words. Consider the story of Mahatma Gandhi, who led India to independence through nonviolence and civil disobedience. Gandhi's respect for his adversaries, even in the face of harsh treatment and injustice, set a powerful example of dignity and integrity. His life demonstrated that respect is not something to demand from others, but something we cultivate within ourselves and manifest in our interactions. 
In our daily lives, this principle challenges us to reflect on our behavior. How do we treat those who disagree with us? Are we quick to judge, or do we offer understanding and patience? Each interaction is an opportunity to embody the virtues we wish to see in the world, creating a ripple effect of respect and kindness. This stoic lesson is a call to action. By leading with respect, compassion, and humility, we not only foster an environment of mutual respect but also inspire others to follow suit. Our actions become a testament to our values, encouraging others to reflect on their behavior and potentially adopt a more respectful stance. Let us ponder, how can I lead by example today, and what impact might my actions have on those around me? Embracing this question and living by its answer is the first step towards a life of fulfillment, peace, and respect, a life where one is never disrespected.